Hi guys, uh, this is August. Uh, Mark told me the date and I forgot already. <laughs> but anyway, since July 4th, Mark has done an awful lot of work. And just to give you a quick synopsis of the River Valley Railroad as it stands today, all of the track except for the track that's hidden in this mountain and the helix is all new track. All of the turnouts, all of the Atlas turnouts have been scrapped. All the turnouts are uh, Pico. They, there's 34 tortoise switch machi machines installed. There's five uh, switch eights, uh, a mini panel, and we'll get the letter it's wrong. It's BD. 20. 20s. There's uh, Mark started that installation and that's going to be slick when no, those are working. Uh, we've been running trains uh, all day. I mean Mark started one this morning and we, my, him and my wife and I were standing out or sitting out on the patio. He just left it running. It went up and down and never had a problem. And uh, there's really some great features about the, the River Valley Railroad now and We'll show you parts of that, uh, but I really want to express my gratitude and appreciation to Mark for all of the hard work that he's done. It's really great track work. <clears throat> I, I was made a comment, you can't even get wheel clatter anymore. <laughs> and he said, well, I can go back with the Dremel and cut some notches. Uh, <laughs> but it, he's just done superb work, and, and we've, been, we've ran trains today, and, and I've done some switching at Danforth Furniture and up, up on the upper level. Uh, really enjoyed myself running, doing some switching operation in the yard. And I'm sure he's going to pause this so we can kind of show you some of the features of the new track plan. But I, I'm just excited. I come home and it's like there was a, a leprechaun that come in here. I even asked Mark, you got a green uh, Irish cap and put your beard on and I'll do a video and say this is the leprechaun that did all this work. This is the River Valley Railroad, not 2.5, no, no numbers. It's just the River Valley Railroad because this is what it is. It's not an expansion on the other. It, this is what it is. Uh, and the way we do this, it's kind of like a mini club without all the politics. It's, it's Mark doing 99% of the work. Uh, I live here. Steve comes down from uh, Globe and Harold comes from... Uh, out at three points when he, he was supposed to be here today and he didn't feel good. So I'm just rambling now like I always do so I'm going to stop so and then Mark uh, can kind of show you some of the great points of our operating capabilities now and really guys any of you guys if you're going to be coming to Arizona give Mark and I both a heads up uh, because I think you could come over and really enjoy operating on the River Valley Railroad. And as always, thanks. And now we're going to stop this and get around to some of the finer points. Well, actually, I'm going to take over without okay. stopping it. Okay. Uh, while we got this train going around up here, I'll show you some other things. Um, this is the new engine house service fa servicing facility. Uh, out of this double slip, as it goes into the yard, you have kind of a unique, almost like a double S there. You got enough for a couple locomotives on each track, and then of course you got the servicing facility where this RDC is. Yeah, and what we're talking about doing is putting an engine house here, right? Yes. And then maybe an ash pit or whatever if we decide we're going to have it more than one steam engine. Bare minimum, what we're going to probably have here will be uh, fuel, water, sand, and um, <clears throat> I, I would like to see maybe a small wash ring uh, would be cool and then uh, yeah because I mean this we, we, we've kind of decided that the RDC will be the only passenger service on the River Valley Railroad uh, versus a whole passenger train where it's not that big and, and you're gonna paint this this is this, this I, is I, not how it's gonna look guys. I, I, I have already done concept art which I will put a picture at the very end of the concept art to, to make all of you finish watching this video and then the, the train just left the yard and went down into the helix. And you can see here's the yard. This still kind of looks the same. This didn't change much. 
but it is going to change eventually because Mark originally wanted to have a crossover track right here and I was I'm, I'm a pain to deal with guys <laughs> and I boohooed it and then I got up here today and I said oh man we need a run around track because we had a train sitting over here so Mark again was right so he's going to put a cross over here to give us a, a nice little run around like we have on the lower level uh, I'm not sure if you noticed when the train was going around it went around twice the upper level that is achieved now by uh, this series of crossovers here which comes along to now it looks like a double main across here to another series of crossovers here also have new lift bridges on the railroad as well uh, <clears throat> engineered these this is half inch Baltic birch plywood great stuff it is nine plies versus your standard five ply um, Baltic birch plywood is the most dimensionally stable plywood you can purchase and this was 32 inches by 48 inches. We got it for $40 no, for that sheet. $32. It was on sale. $32. <laughs> nice. And uh, got it at Woodcraft, which most of you in any major city should have a Woodcraft store. And that's actually what it's called is Woodcraft. Um, we'll, we'll pause this now. Oh, well, no, I want you to, sh I want to show you how Mark's put drift pins down here. Remember we used to have the wooden blocks. So now we got these two drift pins for centering the bridge. They work great. And then today, like he hasn't done enough stuff already in the last three months. So today he put, went and got lag bolts for this side. And so now we got this hook system. And the reason we did that, here was the flaw with my old system. It worked, but it was causing the weight of the bridge for it to start to bow here. Okay, so just... Remember, if you suspend it down here, all of this weight has, gravity is going to take effect and it's going to start to bow the wood. But yeah, these are just great bridges. And uh, if you haven't watched the video of Mark's about these locks, these things are just super. <laughs> and if anybody wants any information on those, just let me know. All right, so we're going to stage a train here and do another little, another little clip before we end this out. So we'll be right back. Lower reversing loop using the helix. Uh, normally it would go to the left out of that turnout right there, but it's going to go to the right and basically just double back on itself. And I get to throw that turnout. That's too good. All, all the all the turnouts on the bottom level are 200 numbered. All the ones in the helix are 300. All the ones in the top level are 400. And, and you threw that turnout via a switch eight and the hand controller. There you go. Automatic reverser. When I get the BD20s put in place. It will automatically throw that turnout um, back again for us, so we won't have to do that. Come back now, dear.